Good evening, everyone. Uh, call the budget workshop to order. Before I turn it over to the superintendent, um, we put up on the district's website, um, we're going to change our budget workshops a little bit from what we've done in the past um, in order to allow a period of time for input on solutions um, to what you hear discussed here this evening uh, from the community. So um, the statement that we discussed at the last board meeting and then subsequently went up on um, the district's website was um, that the the board workshop the budget workshop is scheduled to end at 8 p.m. and the board will be reserving a half an hour at the end of tonight's session for public input to suggest ways of reducing the budget. These suggestions should also be in written form and sent to the district clerk for review by the staff and the Board of Education. They may also be submitted through the website. Please contact the district clerk as we will allow those requesting to speak on a first come first serve basis. This is not a time to voice your concern about the possible cuts. We truly understand that any reduction will have an impact on our district. However, it is our charge to follow the guidelines set up by New York State laws regarding the property tax cap. To voice your concern regarding cuts, you may still do so at the regularly scheduled monthly board meetings under the public discussion on non-agenda items. And also at this time, um, for the purpose and the budget <coughs> workshop, it is not a regular board meeting. Um, I'd like to take consensus of the board on allowing three minutes per speaker during this 30-minute public input time. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. Prokash? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Thank you. Okay. With that, I will turn it over to the superintendent. Thank you, Madam President. Good evening, board members and uh, honored guests. And, uh, it looks like we have a nice turnout here, which does our heart well because we, we're gonna be doing some very important work. It'll be the beginning of a direction that we, we will be taking for the next four months as far as what we have to do to get under the budget cap, the 2% cap, and still run a district that has a uh, multiple programs for all of our students uh, to meet their needs at every grade level. It's not easy. It's uh, many of you have been sitting in here for the last three years. We've gone through quite a few cuts. I just want to say that as we go here tonight, you're going to hear different parts of our district mentioned. You're going to hear uh, schools mentioned. You're going to hear programs mentioned. That doesn't mean when you leave here tonight that those programs have gone away. They haven't. They've been put under discussion. What we need to do is set up hypothetical situations that what can occur if something else occurs. Uh, I, I, uh, I remind you of the letter that I sent to Commissioner King at the beginning of the school year when we found out that uh, one of our, uh, some people in, in our district were going to uh, apply for a charter school. I sent a letter to the commissioner setting up hypothetical situations that if the $2 million that the, the charter school would, would drain away from our taxpayers and from our students, uh, certain things could happen. A building could close, a program could shut down, another program could be truncated. Uh, they, they were not things that I had predicted would happen. They were hypothetical situations that could happen. Well, as you well know, the commissioner evidently didn't agree with me and my ideas, and uh, they went ahead and sanctioned the charter school. Uh, you may not know that the, the, uh, the state sanctioned 10 charter schools in the New York district this year, in the New York state this year. Uh, eight of them were in New York City. One was in Utica, New York, and one was in Newburgh. Newburgh and Utica are similar <coughs> cases of uh, city school districts, uh, Utica being much smaller than us, but just as poor as us. And uh, we still are smarting from, from that sanction. 
We don't feel it was fair to the taxpayers. And uh, when I had a chance to meet with two of the regions through the uh, superintendent's conference out in Goshen, I, I said to them point blank, if you're so enamored in Albany with charter schools, when you, when you sanction them, send them the money to get started rather than take it away from our kids and our taxpayers. So you will be hearing tonight certain things mentioned, but please don't panic. We have a four month journey ahead of us. And those of you that sat here in other times know that many things are mentioned, many things are debated, many things are discussed ad nauseum, and that many things that may look like they're gonna be cut in the beginning don't end up being cut. So bear with us. If you come tonight to speak, I hope you have some suggestions. We need X amount of dollars when you walk in the door. And when you leave here, no matter what we all say to each other, we're still gonna need that X amount of dollars, unless somebody's bringing some with them tonight. So thank you for being here. And uh, we, we hope that at the end of the night, I see smiling faces that I see now. Thank you. Mr. Pacella. Thank you, Mr. Pizzo. It seems uh, just like yesterday that we were in this awful spot. I, unfortunately, the way the governor has structured his laws regarding the 2% tax cap, given the contracts, uh, the contractual obligations that we have and all the other increased prices, I don't see us coming out of this type of situation anytime soon. And as you've heard before, it's not uncommon throughout New York State. Uh, there's our the, the, the uh, school districts north and south of us. Certainly you're following the papers on what they're going through. They're much smaller than us. Uh, and their hits are going to be very large. So be that, you know, that we're in the same boat. You've trimmed our budget over the past couple of years down to where um, we eventually knew we were gonna hit bare bones. Well, we're getting close. So. What I've done, I've given you the packet, and I apologize that you didn't get this packet sooner, but with the governor's proposal coming out later and the, the, all the budget lines that we're still analyzing, um, it, I just didn't think that it, was, it would be productive to send you something that I didn't think was accurate. So what we're having tonight, and unlike any budget sessions that you've had before, we're not going to be looking for consensus tonight on anything coming out or in the, the budget. Again, that wouldn't be fair either. So what we're looking for is some guidance. Um, if any of you had a chance to read through the memo that I put together, none of these have been recommended, but they have been discussed, as Mr. Pizzo said, because what we're looking for is a very large number. So I'll just take you through your packet first. Obviously, there's a memo from me. Then I provided you a line-by-line -line item budget, which shows the current adopted budget of 2012-2013 and the proposed 2013-14 budget in next year's dollars. There's only two changes to that, and I mentioned it in the memo. The two changes, I had to add the charter school tuition at $1.5 million, and that, that can be found on 2110-473 budget plan. And also, um, and this just came up after I ran all the, the, the charts, um, the, the transportation department is recommending that we don't publish in the newspaper the bus routes in the beginning of the year, and I'll explain why. It's not because we don't want to notify everyone, but we send out bus, we send out bus passes to each individual. The bus routes that go into the school uh, beginning of the year are very rarely 100% accurate. As a matter of fact, they're probably at 50% at best because when people get those passes and we get the response back on either the ultimate drop or the wrong address that was in the system, we end up altering the schedules again. So what we're trying to do is avoid that. We called around other school districts. Arlington School District doesn't provide it in the, the paper anymore. Monroe doesn't. They all post them on the website. Uh, so we're looking to do that. Certainly we can add it back, but that would save about $45,000 just in advertising. Uh, again, I didn't mean to take it out without your approval, but this was done while I was in the middle of everything, and I didn't want to rerun all the packets. So I just wanted to give you an idea that wasn't in there. And actually, the rest now to support that from Mr. Connolly. I have the property tax calculations from New York State law, and I'll take you through that. And then there's what most of you are familiar with is that landscape 
proposed budget options for the tax levy, and that takes into account the proposed budget and the target given the tax gap. Again, I'll take you through that. Um, before Christmas, there was a suggestion about uh, the district purchasing a green bus or looking into the purchase of a green bus. Excuse me. Before we go any further on that, there was not a suggestion. It was talked about preliminarily. Mm -hmm. But the green bus, it, it, I don't understand why it's even in here um, at this point. Well, only because it would be an addition to the budget. No, it's not going to be an addition. Uh, I was at a meeting with uh, Mr. Conning last week, and we had discussed, I thought we were going to be talking about that in a regular board meeting, not at the budget meeting. Um, the acquisition, if we go with it, with a new bus, is not going to be a purchase by the district. It's a grant, part of a grant. So it would not, uh, this, this amount would not be coming out of the budget. So this, I'd like to see take it out because we, we already discussed it, uh, which I was going to bring to the board in a regular board meeting, and uh, it's going to be put off. It's not going to be in the first phase of the of the, um, of the grant. And this is the energy grant um, that was uh, given to the district, which is over a three-year period. And uh, this is still in the preliminary stages. And uh, it was decided at a meeting that I went to which I was going to bring to the board, that we were going to put this off into 2014, but there's still some things to work out. So this has nothing to do with any money for the upcoming year. So, and it's not, again, it's not a purchase of this. It was going to be done through a grant, um, grant money, rather than a purchase of this. Okay. The other item in, that the board wanted to see was the suspension program transportation that was brought up. Mr. McLemore, uh and Ms. Lyon are still working through the kinks uh, for the your direction regarding the site and the proposals for that. And then um, we received two public comments or suggestions regarding the budget, budget and they're included. I did answer um, the second one and explained that although we didn't run with one last year, we put in two subs to pick up for that spot, so it ended up being a net addition of one additional administrator. Okay, so now we can go back. The line item budget, certainly we're not going to go through that line by line. You can review that uh, much later. There, I will show you the largest hits. Uh, turn to the back page. And again, this should be no surprise to any of you. The state employee retirement system for the ERS, that rate jumped up to 21.1% on salaries. That increase to the budget is $1,060,000 on salaries. The teacher's retirement system jumped up to 16.25%, which is a 4.4% increase from the prior year. And that increase to the budget is Four million seven hundred sixty-five thousand dollars just for the retirement system. The other large piece of this is the medical insurance. We're going to experience. We believe it's going to be around an eight point nine to nine and a half percent increase on the health insurance premiums. So on the current budget of thirty-five point eight million, that we're looking at two point nine million dollar increase to the budget. So they. That along with the charter school tuition makes up the bulk of the, the number, that, the target that you're going to be looking for. Now I'm going to take you to the property tax calculation. Hold on. Sure. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Um, Mr. Vassaldi, what I see that's missing on this is, is large figures too. And I don't know if it's because we started last year's proposed budget with zero, but both unemployment and workman's comp is not even listed here. Right, because the board took them out over the past two years to use reserves. So there's been no operating budget for those two lines. Been no the budget, year. but there's been a, a relatively large expense for oh, yeah. both of them. Yeah. And the plan was to use your reserves for those two accounts. The unemployment reserve is going to run out. So we're hoping that we finish this year positive so that we can replenish some of that. And also, as well as the other reserves like the tax or, tax or Ferraris and the workers' comp. I want to take you through the property tax calculation. <coughs> no. 
Yeah, it says uh, property tax calculation from New York State law. Just one thing. Yeah. Yeah, as we know, the property tax law is tied to the Rent Control Act in New York City. So that's why none of us business officials think this is ever going to go away. But the misnomer is that people and residents actually think that their taxes can't go up more than 2%. It's 2% property tax levy law. So the way the calculation is done, you take a current tax levy, and then the state provides a uh, base, the tax base growth factor. I have no idea how that's determined. But our growth factor for Newburgh School District is 1.008. The pilots are the payments in lieu of taxes. We have to deduct the current year, the capital tax levy for the prior year, which was none because our debt service or bond and principal payments were equal to the building aid that we received. So we didn't have an exemption for that last year. But the good news is we don't have a deduction for it this year. And then you apply the allowable levy growth of the 2%. And then you add the pilots receivable that we're projecting out for next year and projecting that out to be a 1.578 million, which leaves our tax levy before our adjustments and exclusions at 102 million, 700,869. You see that's not, not much compared to the current levy of 100 million, 133. But because the TRS pension factor is going up so high, the law allows for anything in excess of 2% to be an exclusion or an add back to that level. The state is allowing a 2.41% add back on the TRS. That 2.41% is applied to the estimated salaries of $99.8 million to give us an add back or uh, an allowance to tax for another $2.4 million. And that they also apply the same rule for the tax, the capital levy, where our, this is the first year in a while that our debt service, principal and interest payments on bonds that were approved by proposition years ago, this is one of the first years that the building aid is not meeting that amount. So we're getting 1.17 less, million, less than we're going to have to pay in principal and interest. The law allows for us to recover that in taxes because the taxpayers already approved that in prior propositions. So you add those two factors back to that levy prior to the adjustments, and you get a 106275000 tax levy. It allows for you to tax, according to the tax laws, the 2% tax laws, at 6.13%. Now, that's totally your pleasure at 6.13%. This district has never gone up 6.13%. This district has never laid off 300 people before. So that's where you're at right now, and I use this number to take you into the next spreadsheet. Most of you are familiar with this, Mr. Howard. I, I don't, I don't think that you're. I don't know if you're familiar with this spreadsheet. But this is how, this is how we. I use to target the number that you have to get. So just to take you across the top. We have a current budget that we're operating with at $228 million. The proposed budget, which is this line item budget that you have, is $244.9 million, or an increase of $16,400,000, or a budget to budget increase of 7.18%. Now, on the left side, the local revenue is what we generate from either tuition, interest, uh, OC refunds, insurance refunds, Medicaid reimbursements, E-rate reimbursements. Last year that total was about 5.3 million. We believe that we're gonna, we'll be able to raise another $600,000. So we changed that number to $5.9 million. And then you'll see that fund balance goes from zero all the way up to 5 million. I didn't alter the schedule. You don't have 5 million left. But this is the schedule that we've been using. So just to keep you familiar with the way this operates, I kept the numbers the same. And the state aid figure has been adjusted based on what the governor's proposed. Now certainly when the legislator gets a hold of his budget and they see what's happening from New York and they find some money, that might that could change. But right now, the known factor is the 120836000 It's 2.8 million shy because the pre-K grant aid does not come in play for general fund. So this is strictly general fund aid. 
So if you go over the second column from the right, and the dark, the bold, you'll see a current proposal. And if you follow it down all the way to the bottom half of the spreadsheet, you'll see in the blue shaded area that if you were to provide for no cuts, you would be looking at a 16% tax increase. Certainly that, I don't believe that's going to occur. Now if you look at the first column that says target, and then you come down to the shaded blue, you'll see the 6,141,000, which is your allowable tax levy. It brings it down to 6.13%. But if you look under the target, the word target in bold, that's the number you would need to reduce the budget. It's 9,839,000. That is considered your budget gap. Staff's been reviewing certain items. Um, certainly, $9.8 million is not going to be found by reducing supplies, um, cutting some corners on equipment. There's, there's chunks that we have to look at. And obviously, we've been painstakingly looking at all of them and evaluating all of them. Um, but we need your guidance. The, what's not included in this budget are the elementary security positions because you've only approved them through the end of June. So if it's your pleasure to put them back, I would have to add that to the budget. That comes at a cost of about $700,000. The other area that we're not prepared yet to make a recommendation is that um, the Division of Teaching and Learning and the Division of Student Intervention and Support Services, they're in the process of working with senior staff and school administration to analyze the current enrollment trends, program offerings, and supervision slash oversight of all the instructional and non-instructional departments. Um, certainly, you know, we have a new assistant superintendent for special ed um, who's acclimating herself to all the IEPs and the workings of the department. And certainly, you know that we just started. She hasn't had a chance to make recommendations but along with Mr. Forgen and his team, they're reviewing all that based on everything, uh, all the programs we offer and the enrollment that we are experiencing throughout the district and there's been many discussions with all the principals of each of the buildings. So we'll be prepared to come with certain recommendations at the next meeting. Um, even still, you're going to be looking for a large, a very large number. So we're looking for guidance. I've certainly listed a couple uh, on this memo. And I guess, Madam President, what we need is some, some true discussions over where would you like senior staff to stay away from. Because if we go through all of the, the numbers and, and, and do all the planning and then come back, it's, it, it's just, we'll just keep going back and forth. And if you can come to some sort of consensus on at least where to point us until you see what the, what the devastation is going to be, then we can address it that way. It's uh, strictly up to you. So I'll open it up to the board members, like we're going to uh, open up to the community for any solutions um, they might want to put on the table for dialogue. has been discussing? Sure. Okay. Well, looking at the $10 million, roughly $10 million that we have to look at, we've obviously looked at closing school, like our neighbors are and, and are looking into. Uh, we've identified three elementary schools strictly based on their enrollment, one in each of the municipalities. There's been no recommendation on which one. I'm sure everyone has heard rumors that their school is closing. There has been no determination and no discussion over any school closing. 
We've also looked at the other large chunk that's been brought to you in prior years. It's going uh, to a half-day kindergarten program from a full-day program. Now, both of these are significant numbers. We'll switch to a half-day program in kindergarten, which cause a reduction of about three and a half million dollars. And the closing of an elementary school could range between five and six million dollars. <coughs> the three, you know, should be no surprise. And even with those two drastic things, we're still short. Yes, and especially if you add back your seven hundred thousand in security. So, at this point, I mean, we can come with a recommendation, but the recommendation would be a school, and then you would have a discussion anyway. percent in the levy each individual home is different depending on the equalization rates and the asset value nine the cut nine million eight hundred thousand mm -hmm. and use two million out of the fund balance and, we're still and it's at six point one three increase to the tax levy that's your that's your tax law and that's what i wanted just to get straight yes Sure. So since since we've never raised taxes by six percent before, That's we're actually looking for more than that. You're looking. I put down the six point one three because that's your legal cap. Right. You can certainly go higher, but you need minus. a yeah. You can go over the cap at your pleasure, but you need the super majority. You need sixty percent. At six point one three, you need one vote above fifty percent. I just wanted to. Yeah. And if, if, if from the finance committee meeting, I, I showed you the illustration on your fund balance of where we are because we've been using fund balance for the year. At the end of this year, if you use that two million dollars, you'll probably only have about a million or so left. The only thing this budget shows is, is the contractual obligation. Zero increases in anywhere else. <coughs> it was shown zero, and we have three contracts that have to be negotiated. Correct. Yes, Mr. Lewis. I assume the senior staff will look at all the problems. And see where we can downsize in every department, in the district, mm -hmm. including school, elementary school, mm -hmm. and administrative staff throughout mm -hmm. the district, and teachers, so all the way throughout the district, mm -hmm. where we can uh, downsize. Mm -hmm. It's obvious that we, we will have to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's going on right now. We've been meeting with the principals, we've been meeting with the different people throughout the district. Uh, we've been looking at with the schedulers, uh, how uh, different areas are scheduled. Uh, we always hear the rumors that there's classes with six kids, 12 kids, and 10 kids. Well, this is the year we're going to find out where those classes are. If they exist, they will not exist past June. <coughs> and, and possibly in uh, three, or, three or four of our upper grade buildings. And there is a possibility of us closing one of the school. There's a strong possibility. Yes. Possibility. yes. And how much would that save? Well, it, it, it depends which one. Between five and six million dollars. <laughs> so, as, as a first meeting here, a first blush, so to speak, uh, we, 
we put some parameters on the table and some directions to go in uh, for your benefit and to help us uh, continue with our work. We hope that by the next budget meeting, we will have some of those uh, building recommendations and uh, downsizing recommendations for you. Are there any uh, plans to meet with charter school people again to, to see what can be done? Uh, in relation to what? What would the meeting? Funding. I mean, I mean, we, we have to put out the one point some million dollars, and we really don't have it. That's correct. Right, so it's an extra one point, point five at this point. Sit down with them again. I know they're asking. It. What they're asking for us to sit down again, I no one's contacted me about that. Okay, well, through the grapevine doesn't work because I don't, I don't know anything about it. Okay, you do know we did meet with them, and uh, our, our request was that they postpone for a year because they it looked like they weren't going to have enough time to do all the things they needed to do. Uh, according to their charter by the time frames that were listed in the charter. So we went to them in good faith and asked them if they could hold off in a year, hoping that maybe things get better next year. You always hope that things are better the next year. Uh, that hasn't happened in the last three years, but you, you, uh, you have to have hope. Uh, they told us point blank they weren't not going to do that, that uh, but they wanted us to take my letter to Commissioner King off the internet because it, people out there were calling them up and blaming them for the shortfall in the district. And I said, well, they should call you and tell you that you're causing almost a $2 million shortfall. That's a fact. I didn't make it up. And uh, they, they didn't want any part of it. So now, if they have a different change of heart, no one has called me as they called me the last time. And this is the issue, Mr. Pizzo, as, as you and I discussed the other day about meeting with um, you know, someone from their group, I'll say, but the issue is that it's one person and if the board, which is who we met with the last time when we took a few people there, um, if the board isn't going to agree with this one individual who is against, you know, uh, opening in July of 2013, it really doesn't matter. We can meet with that individual, but he does not have the support of the board of directors of that charter school. So, you know, I, I, I don't see what meeting with, with one individual is, is going to do. I mean, if, if they, in good faith, I will meet with them. If, if, it, if we had something to work out, I, I'd be glad we do it. All they have to do is call me. And what I'm saying with the situation that we're in now, if we do scratch the bottom of the bar, we try to come up with some support from somewhere to help us with the situation. And, and I don't think it would hurt for us to, tr to try to meet with uh, Tom Fitzgerald and the board, or, or two or three people from the board with Tom, and to see what could work out. I don't, I don't see what we could lose. I, I have no problem with that. I will go and meet with anybody if it means that we can have more for our kids than, we're, than it looks like we're going to have right now. That's what, that's what I'm so I, I'm willing to do that. There's no I'm willing ego to do here. that again, Mr. Pizzo, but, you know, they were, they were pretty adamant. Uh, you know, it, it's not going to hurt anything, but, and we will go and meet with them. But at the end of the day, they have gotten their approvals. They have no reason to bargain with us or say that they want to help us out. They really don't. We are obligated to pay that money. So I'll be happy to sit with them, but I'm not aware that other than one person, nothing has changed. At what one I point, what I just stated came from Tom Fitzgerald and Seth Leslie. Aye. Well, there were several of us at the meeting, but I don't know if Judy and probably going to say the same thing I am. As Dawn said, they were adamant, Mr. Lewis, that they, mm -hmm. they were just not willing to move. And maybe he is the only one, but we extended all the branches. We gave suggestions. We, were, we extended that we wanted to work as a team. We told them the situation we were in this year, Mr. Pizzo and Mr. Cassell were very specific about how it was going to hurt us to and sense wives, and then the rest of us were very specific about how it was going to hurt our kids, 
and are standing and trying to reach out and how we have already tried to reach out to these kids that now are in this charter school that's pulling away from the kids that are presently with us. I, I just, I think we need, if they are going to make a phone call to Mr. Pizzo, of course, I'm sure he'll have a conversation, but I think we need to move forward as if this money is coming out because I'm pretty sure it's coming out, especially after the last meeting with them. They, Mr. Mr. Lewis, they had one agenda item when we were with them, and that was for me to take the letter off the internet. And that's that was the, all they wanted that's to all they about. wanted to talk about. They didn't want to talk about anything else. As I said, this this conversation right. came from Tom and so. All right. And if, if, if you don't want to be with a little No, I, I, didn't, I, I said that I will meet with anybody anytime. I would never say that I'm not going to meet with them. I don't have that luxury. Okay. This is I do think that we should, I agree with Pam, I think we should move forward as though, you know, that this is a, an accomplished fact that, that we are going to be short that money for the charter school. But because of the way that meeting ended, and I was so uh, insistent that they, <coughs> they agree to take the question back to the rest of their board, you know, would you agree to postpone for a year? I, I think the fact that they haven't even given us the courtesy of an answer, we, we should, instead of asking to meet with them, that we should instead ask for an answer to our question. Because I, I think it's, it's disrespectful. Now, how, how can you go forward in good faith if you haven't been treated <coughs> appropriately? So I, I would ask that before we move to a sit down, that, that we ask for an answer to our question. I just simply ask him, did you take this back to your full board and what was the Because answer? they agreed to do it. Right. As I brought the questions back that they asked of me, yes. that I brought back to the full board, that, you know, no, we weren't going to agree to those conditions, and, and that was that. So, uh, yeah, we can do that. Yes, Mrs. Mack. Okay. I would like to ask for some additional information from central administration uh, on the two issues of closing of an elementary school and reducing kindergarten <coughs> to a half-day program. What I would like to see about the elementary school would be the effect that would be felt around the district on class size. <coughs> because even though it says here that the selection uh, of the potential schools is being based on, on enrollment, no, uh, it's it's the the enrollment that would be then, yeah, resulting. No, mm -hmm. uh, just like the articles we've been reading about Marlboro going from twenty to thirty kids in a classroom. Well, what would happen in Newburgh? Right. To me, that is information that you need before you go forward with the conversation. Well, we we've done that. We looked at. Oh, you didn't give me that. One. You no, know, because we didn't want to put out. We didn't want to put out our any recommendations. But Mr. Jensen can certainly rely, or certainly answer your question because he has done some, some analysis on at least two of the schools. Yeah, we, we, you are familiar with the concept of the scoreboard that we put out. And basically what we did was we tried to put out our best projection on one or two. I can't remember if we did the second one completely. But uh, we can present one with all three and what the effects would be. But obviously, the smaller your, your uh, school, the less effect it would have on the other schools. So you have three three schools that have been presented, and, and basically you know that each one, depending on which one you do, is going to have a, a, a rising or a diminishing effect on the class size of the other range. Or you review the ranges. What are the ranges of the class sizes? The ranges of the class sizes are in the high 20s to low 30s. I think that we need to be able to see that on, on a piece of paper. Yeah, you know, where we're looking at school one, school two, school three. We, we run those. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, don't you agree with me, fellow yes. board members? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And we can do that. Just, just the, the math of it would be, obviously, the smaller school that you close would create less class size. Right. Because if you're going to keep the smallest school open, it's not, it's not 
house it wasn't built to, to have such large classrooms. Right. The larger the school, the larger the ripple effect. Right, right. The but, but we need to be able yeah. to see the effect of even closing the smallest school, yes. uh, especially on those primary class sizes where the children are going to Because if they're not able to do that at the beginning, then you're going to see the effects of it all the way on. And we're going to be in the same situation that we're in now with the graduation rate if we're not addressing the needs of the kids having that level. Again, this, this was not an item for you to come up with which school tonight. No, I didn't. Right? This right. was just for discussion to see if you are even thinking that it has to be a school. Right. I think I'll probably you know, fall down you know, when I see any of them. Well, I fell over my chair when I saw these numbers, so. Right. So, yeah, I am on the floor. And, and then with the kindergarten, uh, I, I would like to remember when we were considering reducing to a half day for pre K? Yeah. Yes. And we had that side by side right. of, of how much time, instructional you know, time. The, yes. the instructional time and, and so on. I would like to see that uh, for the full day kindergarten and for the half day kindergarten mm -hmm. so that we have an idea. Um, and, and maybe, you know, someone, Ed, I, I don't know, or, or a kindergarten teacher. You know, someone who can really talk to us and explain what this means as far as what the children need to learn. We thank you, Mrs. McAfee. What you're doing right now is exactly what we thought we would like to see this first meeting. This happened to well with the different items. That you <coughs> and then that way we can focus in on, on the research between now and the next meeting and come to you with, with charts and, and things of that sort, which would include the, the class sizes, would include the money saved, or uh, however it works out. Yeah. You, you, might, you might also come up with items that we have, we have not mentioned. You might want to bring up items that we've discussed over the past couple of years. Certainly, none of us are recommending the assistance at this point, because we don't know which school is going to be increasing class sizes. If you go to a half-day kindergarten, we're certainly not going to think that it's advisable to remove the assistant out of a half-day class. So you know that's been brought up. We didn't bring that up again tonight because we don't know which way this is going to go. But you also may have other ideas that we don't know were large chunks that we wouldn't think about removing the program, but you may. But, but they're almost contingent on each other. Because right. if you close an elementary school and you increase class size, mm -hmm. then that, that's all the more reason not to even think about, you know, starting to take away the TAs. Right. So uh, that's so exactly what I just we thought. Ahead of thinking about it. That's why they're not on the same Sounds like they're on the same page. So. Yeah, that's why they're not on the same page. Still letting me? And us. And hopefully that's the way we go forward. Uh, we're working together. I, yeah. In regards to this uh, closing of an elementary school, you, you have a figure here that, that an estimated reduction. Is that for closing one yes. or, three, or just one, one school? One school. Get that. Okay. So, I mean, if that was the way that would go, and, and I certainly hope not. Um, I'm sure we'd like to see where the reduction is coming from. Is it positions that are being eliminated, or well, yeah. where exactly? Well, if that was a school, you're eliminating all all of the classrooms and administration and custodial leaders shutting the building down. And uh, another thing, so do, do you have um, with you the summary of changes for last year? I have the three five. I would like to last. The this, this, um, this, yeah. <coughs> oh, of what you, of what the board removed? Yes. Yeah. I don't have it with me. I can certainly send that out. I can give you the past uh, couple of years. So you can see what's already been eliminated. I have three here. Sure. It's a very difficult thing for you to go through, and we understand that. I hope everyone else understands that. Uh, this is, we're going into the fourth year now of cuts. First year wasn't that severe, and uh, none of us had seen anything like this before. We thought that it would be a spike of a year or two, and then things would start to get back to normal. We're not seeing that. We're seeing this spike continue, and uh, from what we're hearing out of Albany and, and uh, from, from the legislature and everybody that you want to talk to, SCT, that this is going to be even longer than we anticipated, and it's going to get more difficult as we go along. After a while, you know, you're cutting off an arm and a leg, and then you know, we only have a couple of arms and legs each. And, and that's the way it's worked out. So I understand how difficult this is, and I understand what a 
shopping. Everybody, but we're all, we're all in this together. And we have to do the best that we can to work our way out. These are the cards which we dealt. These are the ones we have to play. Yes, Mr. Whitall. Mr. Pizzo, have we heard anything from the city on the mayor, the ex-mayor's uh, charter school? I haven't heard anything. I've read an article in the paper that he's working very closely with the yeah. Newberry School District. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't said a word to me. Nor me. So I don't know who is working. Is he working with anybody here at this table that we don't know about? Yeah. I, I don't know what's happening with the charter school. With his charter school. But we could get stuck losing even more money. If that's, that's right. True. If he gets a sanction, or if that's another charter school that he pays for. Uh, that would probably come into play in the 14, 15 year, because I don't think you'd get approval for that one, please. I wouldn't bet on anything coming at all. Well, I don't think that the regents or the state is that naive to realize you can't approve a charter school in the middle of a budget. I would hope not. Yeah, that's <laughs> Some of the other things that would happen. I would say yes. Yes, Ms. Prokash. I just had a question. Last year, um, one of the things that we did during the budget um, was we went to and got the proposed students come here who were supposed to be saving so much money, but we didn't get the numbers. Do we expect to get more numbers this year? Well, I think Cecilia is will be reviewing a lot. Because that's a savings there. If they come to that's all part of um, what we're in the process of analyzing and reviewing. Um, what our current programming looks like, the provision of continuing service, um, what the anticipated needs are as we begin in the new process. So we staff and I are working on that to get specific. Do you think that it's appropriate to have a discussion over which elementary school the board may be leaning, even without the figures, or you need to see the figures? Absolutely. You need to see the figures? You need to see the figures. And, you know, and, we, and again, knowing that the smaller school has less ripple effect on class size, but mm -hmm. that also means a smaller reduction mm -hmm. in cost to the budget. So we really do need to see those, those numbers okay. before having that. And, and I would think that perhaps, uh, you know, at least a comment from, from Mr. Velez concerning the, the physical structure of the three buildings, because just looking at the names, I don't think that they're equal uh, right now. And, and so, you know, looking down the road three to five years, uh, the condition of the buildings could be a factor as well, because maybe we wouldn't have the money to repair a building if we chose one that wasn't in, in very good shape. Is it, is it fair to say that if it is going to be a school, it would be one of these three, or do you want us to evaluate any other one? You said you chose them by enrollment. Chose right? by enrollment. No, then don't go larger, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Had to ask. Yeah. Yes, The analysis that I'm going to go back and do will be the analysis of all the staff and the reductions, including all the building costs, utility costs, water, so everything that's involved with closing that building, and it will be labeled out by FTEs by title. Okay. 
with their with the costs. Now certainly you know those people are not the ones. Right. So I have to do it based on the seniority. That's why if you go through this exercise, it involves a, a great deal from human resources to look at seniority lists. Mm -hmm. So we'll come back with all the FDEs and the positions that it involves. Sure. Yeah, I, I thank you. Even before I raised my hand, you, you knew that I was getting ready. Um, but, you know, hopefully that when we see this, that, that all those dollars will be secondary to the human cost, that, that will put the, the children first. You know, uh, because I'm still back on the risk <coughs> in the enrollment of the primary classes and what it will do to those children learning to read. Okay, so please let, let's let's make sure that when we look at it, we don't get locked in on dollar signs, mm -hmm. but that we look at, at kids. Mr. Howard. Yes. Uh, I'm a little new to this process, but I'm a little bit overwhelmed here. Uh, no, it doesn't get any better, Phil. <laughs> well, I'm sit down. Let's sit down and have an intelligent conversation with regards to budget cuts and uh, something of this magnitude. I would think that all the stuff that we're requesting should have been here tonight. I mean, how can we have an intelligent discussion on what buildings or what schools and, and not have the numbers that will go into those decisions? Uh, yeah. It just wasn't enough time. Okay, so. So that's why I said the next budget meeting. This is still too early in the process for all of you. You shouldn't even ask that question to discuss a building. I, I wouldn't even attempt. What I was going to say is they have to bring us something, A, for discussion, and B, they have to know if the things that they brought forward for discussion aren't, shouldn't even be on the table. Why should they do all of that work and get all of that information if they bring it here and we're like, don't bother because this board won't even consider this. So that's about, why. But he was talking about the bill here. He was saying that right. shouldn't we have those numbers to even discuss that intelligently? Not if we yeah. all, if we sat here and if all we nine of us said absolutely not. We're not closing a building. Four right. days were the times four people where they could have been working on something else that we should be considering. Yes, Ms. Brody. The only, uh, mm -hmm. Support of Phil, what he just said. There should be nothing that's not on the table. Exactly. Nothing that's not on the table. Correct. With the dire straits that we're in, we should have, the board should have every possibility out there. Rather than, well, this is a possibility or that is a possibility, and then we're expected to make decisions based on not all the facts. And, and that, that's very, very difficult. But if we had everything laid out, and I know it takes a lot of work, but this is the process. But in the same token, we have sat here, and we know that everything is on the table. No, we, we don't know that. We don't know everything's on the table. We, we, don't, we don't know. We just know three schools are mentioned and half-day kindergarten. But it, we have the right to say, let's take all sports out. We have the ability no, no. to say, they, they are the ones let's that pay the budget. Let's and we, we then, they bring it to us and we discuss it. It's not up to us to bring forth the budget. It's up to central administration to bring it to us and for us to decide. It's not for us to decide whether this sports team there or that. You know, and then we, we, we give a consensus on this and then two weeks, uh, next month we back off on it because it's, you know, and it's, it's an awful, awful process. It's I understand process. that, but let's put everything out on the table, for instance, uh, give us figures so we can look at how much is the cost for home teaching kids that are suspended. Give me the facts and figures. How much would it be for another program? Facts and figures. Mr. Velez did a wonderful job last year with doing uh, with his department and saving money. Are there other departments going to do the same sort of thing with the type of scheduling and save money for us? Things the process, like that. They're in the process of that, Ms. Prokash. They're in the process of doing that. I know they're in the process of doing that, but, but this is the beginning of, of a process for us to do reductions. And by piecemealing it like this, it's not it's not giving us the full story. Mr. Pasella. Yeah, to answer the questions, we did present you a budget. We didn't present you a budget that's under the cap. So you have a budget in front of you with the current program. So we did present you a budget tonight. 
we did not come, and we didn't even do this last year, February 7th, come with any severe recommendations on okay. but it's too early in this process to have all that information and to make valid recommendations. We're still reviewing the enrollment uh, across, across every school. The principal's meetings just occurred this week. It was physically impossible to give you the information that you're seeking right now. The next meeting, you will have all of that. Well, I brought it up in public in a, in a, in a board meeting um, right after we had a reorg that we should be working on budget for next year starting then. That was in September. Of what we had, of what, you know, what was laid out, of what we're seeing coming down the line. Because all I heard, well, we're going to be in bad shape. We're going to be in bad shape. But now we know we're in bad shape. But there was no facts and figures. If we knew, you know, then you could be working on things prior to, you know, our first thing here go around tonight. Well, we just got the governor's budget two and a half weeks ago. So we but we knew he enough. wasn't going to be Santa Claus to give us anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know? He's going to give us a little bit more. Well, if he gave us a little bit more, you know, hallelujah, we can spend it. But we know, basically, there's a, there's a, you know, there's a line that he drew in the sand, and he's not going back from that. The, the facts and figures that, that they've worked with up until this point included no change in state aid, correct, Mr. Pasella? Up so, through the, the beginning of November and December, my early projections were around 12 to 13 million that were going to be short. It's a little bit worse because I didn't know the pension factors, I didn't have all the information from the insurance company. We all want the same thing. We don't want to cut anything. So we, we as board members, we can start thinking out of the box too. In my personal opinion, I've sat here not forever, but long enough to, to think that the state wants us to go educationally insolvent so they can take over and make district-wide school systems. I think we have to think beyond this year into next year and the year after because I really believe that's what they want to do. And we have all these charter schools coming up now that I think probably people supported that didn't think it was actually going to come back to bite us in the butt, which it certainly has financially. Um, I think we as board members too should try to start thinking out of the box. It, I mean, we need the numbers from them, but I mean, we're all here for the same reason. We're not here to work against each other, so I think that needs to be put out on the table. But being, excuse me, but being. But voicing your opinion and saying things that should be done is not necessarily working against each other. Right. It's asking things to be out on, on, the, on the board. Right. It's, it's not working against each other. It's basically working together. Right. But working together by seeing what, we, we're, we're, what we're working with. Right. We're not I seeing what I we're working with. I agree with that if it's proposed in the right manner. I, I, to me, it, I, I felt defensive, and I'm not even that, because I, I, don't know, I feel everybody, everybody here works so hard, everybody. That I don't, we need to get the numbers from them, they need to get certain numbers from the state. Uh, what I, I said think, they was offensive to you. I don't think they're holding back, the central if, office if, is holding back on us. What I said was offensive to you? Maybe I just take things that way. Okay. Because it's gonna get I, worse, yeah. or it gets better. I mean, there's, always, there's, there's always a way to say something, even if it's, <laughs> It's a tone. It's, it's I have said things in a tone for the last few years. I've been on this board the same tone. I'm here for the children of this district. Right? As we all are. Correct. So if I say it in a certain way and you say it in a different way, we're here for the same thing, so we're on the same page. That's what I'm trying to say. We're all on the same page, including central office that didn't bring you the numbers that you wanted today. Well, they're not. That's not being on our page. Our page is to bring us the numbers. Mr. Levenstein. Um, getting back to the elementary schools, uh, another thing, maybe, I, I don't know if we would have this in there, but in addition to what the enrollment is in the schools, maybe what the capacity is for those schools, too. Because there may be uh, 
if the school isn't fully utilized, that closing a different one and filling that more may make a difference in our projections. And then also, I don't know how you would show this, but I keep on hearing that our, our schools are relatively crowded. So if, if we close a school, is there room for, for the kids? Now maybe we, we you know, take care of that problem by doing what I don't want, which is you know, increasing the, the size of, of the class from, from 20 to 30 or whatever. But you know, we still have to be able to fit the kids into the cafeteria and into the halls, and, you know, all the other things that, that are involved. So if, if there is a way to show whether or not, you know, where, where's the room? Uh, especially after we moved back the uh, pre-K classes. Right, into the, into the buildings that were K-5, right. Which is part of the reason why you can't have all the numbers the first time you meet. No, because we're really asking, I would think, for some pretty complicated stuff. And my head is already spinning. You mentioned, Michael, I think, uh, a number in your opening comments, about 300. Um, over the past couple of years. Oh, okay. It was a cumulative number. Yeah, cumulative right. number. Not, not enough. No, no. For this year. I hope not. No, so, so do I. That's why I wanted to clarify that. No. Well, some of those numbers were through attrition as well. Right. I mean, they, they weren't all uh, firing. Right. But that, that's where if, if uh, you would uh, reissue those uh, summary sheets to us. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't think I have them. Yes, yeah, I know. Michael, can you just, I was late, but I don't think you uh, went over because I just came in on the introductions. Can you reiterate to us what happens if the budget goes austerity and goes down because if, people don't want the 6% increase? Right. If the budget gets defeated the first time, then the board has the option to put it out again. Um, and I'm assuming that you're going to keep it under the cap, so if it gets defeated by, you know, just a, under the cap regular defeat, um, then you have the option of putting it out again. And at that point, it's whatever you determine the number to be. If you want to lower the, the number, obviously there'd be more cuts. Um, but you can also just go right into austerity. You can adopt an austerity budget. An austerity budget up until this 2% tax cap law last year meant that only the board can decide what's a contingent expense and spend money up to a certain amount, which was which was relative to the CPI and a factor that was provided by the state. The new laws for austerity budget means the same number of taxes that you collected last year is all you can increase or is all you can collect with the, the current year. So you would lose the option of raising another six million dollars, and the exclusions don't count. That's what I am. So if it gets defeated, I told you that an elementary school costs between five and six million. Yes. I have another thing that, that I, I would like to try to verbalize about the kindergarten. Um, uh, when, when you develop this uh, comparison. I, I don't fully understand this change that the Common Core has brought about in kindergarten. But I know there is a change that has occurred. So could you, uh, our, our, again, going back to a kindergarten teacher, someone try to, to explain if you have to teach more in the same amount of time? I see some nods that are going on out there in the audience. Yeah, because wouldn't that be a factor, too? In other words, it might look as though it's, it's, it's comparative. But if more has to be taught, in that amount of time, that could be a factor that we should take into consideration. Um, I'm trying to worry in all different directions. <laughs> there, there's just that we put another TA in the classroom, and that be less money. There's, like you said, there's so many scenarios. If you go to half day and then add someone back in, is that less? How much savings? Maybe 
still giving them core and the lesser. Uh, and, and sometimes more people don't help. You simply need more time. Mm -hmm. oh. change from full day pre-kindergarten to half day kindergarten had on those children? I don't believe that our, our old program has never been full day, completely. We had two sections that were full day, and but for as long as I can remember, they've always been half day. We went full day, I think, just for two years. Well, we went through a tremendous amount of angst when we, you know, reduced that. Though, to, to the half day. So, you know, it, it would be the closest thing that we would have to be able to, to, to talk to people to see what the effect was. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, we, we sort of have a habit of not assessing the effects of things. Right. That, that the changes are made and then there's no assessment to see if it was effective in a positive or a negative right. way. Mm -hmm. And maybe we could learn something um, by, by going and talking to those pre kindergarten teachers mm -hmm. about what, you know, we, we might face if we did the same thing in kindergarten. Mr. Woodhull? Yes, it seems to me, Mrs. Mack, uh, when we were running full day uh, pre k that when we decided to split back to half day, we ended up adding, I think, the children lost like 15 minutes, or 15 to 20 minutes of uh, their educational time uh, by splitting out half day and full day. And I'm not sure that uh, that number is still true. I guess we really have to back take a look at it. And I'm not sure that we did it long enough we did it long enough, um, by looking at the children's grades. Yeah, you're this right, Tom. I mean, we became convinced that there was very little change in yes. the instructional time. Correct. And that was why we did it. Yes. <clears throat> Yes, Ms. Prokash. Uh, I'm on page 19 on the on the transportation yeah. <coughs> contract. Um, are these contracts with the bus companies um, negotiated every year? No, they're they're in five year increments. Because I noticed this one year went up a little bit. Well, what happened was the, last year we eliminated TriStar okay. in the middle of the year, so um, West Point Tours assumed their their routes because they were the cheapest uh -huh. contracted rate between all the the, the, uh, the vendors that we have. So they assumed the bulk of TriStar's rates. So if you notice going forward, TriStar's eliminated. Yeah, it's twenty three percent. It's no, it's one point one million. TriStar oh, out. No, TriStar went 100% reduction. Right. That one million has been shipped up to West Point. One million. Right. But it, but these negotiations, these contracts are are set and then. They're for five-year terms. Right. And they're each increases in the contract according to the contract. Each five years, each year it's based off the CPI increase. And the, the fuel reimbursements fluctuate each year also. So where are we on on the five years? Some of them are they're not all together. In other words, we didn't contract with West Point Tours for five years. We contracted for certain routes within five years. And then when, every time they come up, Mark is reevaluating them and if we can get it cheaper through a bid, we we'll certainly can do that. But they're all we have probably I'm gonna say a little better than hundred contracts. So we've got 200 contracts, and they all don't expire by one company within five years. But there's increases built in this five years? In the contract, it allows for 2%, or the CPI increase. This year, happens to be 2%. I think that's what we factored in. I think that's what we factored in. 
So the reduction of the um, TriStar contract of $1.1 million is seen in the increase of $1 million. Right. And you'll see a, another large the decrease in one of the other companies. Uh, it's because they, yes, we, we took routes away from them because we didn't feel the performance was right. acceptable for us. So we started taking routes away. Right. So there's a reduction built, there of a half a million dollars. We yeah. built that in the contract too, that any time the district feels in the best interest of us, that we can remove a route and give that to another bus company. And we started doing that because some of the bus companies are not uh, doing what the principals are we asking to. Yes, okay. Also, I know this has been brought up before, but just to eliminate my mind, you know, people have said, uh, let's talk to us and said even to you, well, sometimes the buses are half full mm -hmm. on a route. Mm -hmm. Is there any way of consolidating it so you have more, you know what I'm saying? Well, we've done, the problem is, when that, this happened this year, there's one bus that, and we typically don't have many kids on the bus, so there's been a hundred kids assigned to the bus. When it rains or snows, the hundred tried to cram on the bus, we had to actually add a couple buses. But most of the time, the enrollment or the, the, uh, the routes are set up to pick up 30, 40 kids. Because obviously the demographics of the district and how widespread some of the towns are, it would create such long routes if you even went farther around to collect more kids. But we don't know who's going to be driven, who's going to walk, who's going to drive uh, their own car, especially at the high school. So when you see a, a bus, that's very possible. But if it rains, you can see that same bus go right and it has to be by law, they have to have that, right? I mean, let's say we have to provide transportation. You have to, no matter if the kid has a own car and drive to school, you still have to have that for right. that. Well, I don't think a any, seat for that. Yes. Well, I don't think any parent would waive the right to transportation. We don't have to have that for your policy and transportation within the mile to the secondary school to point six. We don't schedule those buses. Um, but yeah, we do provide for that, just in case. If you can't have I mean, a bus. If you cut bus routes, it only affects the kids in the city anyway, because in a town with no sidewalks, they're all busted. Well, we can't cut. We have to transport according to your policy. Right. So we can't cut just because the, the child lives in the city. No, I'm not saying cut, but I'm saying that usually if cuts are made within, you know, a mile or so, it just affects most of the kids in the city because your sidewalks are going to walk on this. In a town, there's no sidewalks, so. Well, that's, that's the board policy. That's not state law. State law provides for two miles elementary, three miles secondary. And the district doesn't get any aid on any student that we transport inside of those limits. down here other options um, in the tax, the increase to the tax levy. But we don't have $5 million to take from the fund balance to put out a tax levy increase of 3.14. Is that correct? Yes. That's correct. So that's well, not really now it's not correct. No, and I explained, I, I kept that just for familiarity uh -huh. of, of this spreadsheet. Um, you never know. So, right, I'm just trying to figure out, like, I'll say it's kind of predetermined by what's sitting in the fund balance, what tax levy increase we actually are forced to go out with. Well, I don't know how this year's gonna end up yet. Uh, I don't know what the legislator's gonna do. <laughs> Turn around and, you know, the legislator last year, I mean, you had the assembly give us $250,000 the last minute. Mm -hmm. uh, the legislator give us a, a little bit more uh, than the governor. Those aren't those things right now. I don't expect them out until April. Uh, right, a April, right. April 1st is, right. is the deadline, and, and they have assured us that it, they're going to meet the deadline. But the fact of the matter is, for the board's purpose, we have to go with the money that we've got. And we don't have $5 million in the fund balance, so it's not an option to put out to the voters for a 3.14 increase to the tax levy. That's correct. As of right now, we don't have that option. I didn't alter the sheet. Right. I will certainly take it out for the next meeting. No, I, you know, I just, 
again, it, it, for, I understand why you put it in there, familiarity, you know, with, with the process and what we've seen, but I just want the board to understand that that's not even on the table. <coughs> we can't go out with a 3.14 increase to the tax levy for the taxpayers because we don't have the money to cover that, which would cost us $5 million out of our fund balance. So, so you guys all understand that's not an option. Yes, Mr. Levinson. Uh, Mr. Purcell, the, the, um, each of these items on these line items, they're, they're a total, like total transportation and, and different lines. Is it, would it be a lot of work to get what we actually spent in that in 2012 to 2013? What you spent what we, to What we spent in that, um, <coughs> to date. Comparing the adopted budget versus what it actually was. Well, we're okay. So this here. is only cap. So, could, I mean, I'm just looking for things that may be out of out of whack from what's adopted versus reality. What what is you want a current budget statute? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Mr. I just want to clarify that fund balance thing. Is is the 3.14 the only one I should take off? Uh, and I was going to say, Mr. Pacella, based on what we have right now, okay, what are our tax levy increase options that you've provided on this sheet? The 3.14, 4.14, 5. The uh, uh, blue highlighted. Right. Is your is your option? All right. That's the safest option. Right, that's, right. that's the safest option. Do and we have enough money in the fund balance to do the 5.13? Right now, after January's board meeting, mm -hmm. you have 4.4 .4 million left in fund balance. Two million of that is what you appropriate each year. So two million of that should come off the top or you have to find another two million dollars worth of cuts. So I'm assuming that you're going to appropriate two million right. of that 4.4, .4. that leaves you 2.4 million left for Okay. Anything that can so, happen. Right. So right. Which so, is so less basically than 1%. right. So basically Mrs. McAfee, we could do the four point one four, which would completely wipe out the okay. um, fund balance. Or we could do the five point one three. Or we could do what the state limit is at six point one three. But if if that's decided, what you need to know that if we get children in here that have special needs and go through the IEP in the middle of next year, you won't have fund balance to draw from. You will have to cut something else. Okay, so, so pretty much it's 5.13 or 6.13. Okay, so we also <laughs> cross off the 4.14. I don't want options that aren't real. Right, right, exactly, yeah. exactly, you know. Um, which is a problem since this board has never had to go out to the community with a tax increase of 6%. I mean, we always tried to stay between three and four before we were, we were doing zero for those several years. Um, and that, based on our current fund balance, and because we've been appropriating $2 million every year to keep the tax levy at zero, we don't have that option any longer. like we could appropriate the two million that we planned on and we could appropriate or we could appropriate the three million but other than that in order to have money in there for um, these special education and other things that come up during the year it's not the rest of it isn't an option at this point you could do that but right. within the next couple months if we get IEP students in that dip in the fund balance or we find out what's going to happen for the rest of the year if we're not going to come in under budget or if we're not going to reap the revenue because the state certainly will withhold revenue, you may not have this balance at the end of June. Right now you have it, but you still have so the balance. So we really have to go out, as you said earlier, to six months. I would recommend you go out to that. <laughs> you still have contract negotiations. 
it's a no-win situation. But you know what? It helps us know why we're looking at closing an elementary school and going to half day. Whether, whether we want to think that or not, but you know, you, you, you need a reason for coming back to that sheet. And, and the discussion that we just had for a few moments, I think, mm -hmm. helps us you know, get our feet on the ground mm -hmm. you know, and be a little bit more real. Just not happy. You know, it's important for us to have these discussions because, again, the community needs to understand the reality and the severity of this situation and that we really don't have any options. Unless hopefully somebody out there is going to come up with a great idea. And I did promise whenever I get a budget comment or suggestion, I would bring it to you. And those are the only two that I've gotten so far. And we haven't even no, discussed them. One, one costs money and one only saves a little bit of money. No, they both cost money. They both cost money. The executive right. is out with one executive and with two APs. Right, they, right, that's true. So, so really the net in that really isn't even the 150 or whatever that's been allocated. Because if you have to put another AP in, then uh -huh. go ahead. If, if you go with the model that you're running right now at the high school, mm -hmm. you're running with one additional administrator that you started with in the beginning of the year, including the executive. You have, you put in two APs at each of the campus to compensate for the executive principal that is no longer there. So the net is an increase of one administrator. So the model that was suggested does cause an increase to the, increase to the budget of an additional 170000 specific figures that you can think of that like are an absolute must other than what we've already discussed that needs to come back. Anyone else? Did you say any figures that we need? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, like yeah. Extra earnings. Extra earnings? Yeah, extra earnings are above above the salaries. Okay. They're they're all separate. I separate those out in the line item budget. They're in here. They're in, they're in each line item budget by department. Are you just list any specific one? Yeah, I'm talking about the, 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 if we took our cleaners and our cleaners are making forty thousand dollars and at the end of the year they made eight. Mm -hmm. That's that's in here. They're all they're all by line. The the custodial overtime uh, two hundred and eight thousand dollars is what's uh, budgeted. And it's like it's like that on every on every uh, sub sub budget sub -group. Sub -group. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you look, if you just go down, you'll see it's labeled extra earnings. The one that ends with a zero, the middle, the way the the state the codification works is uh, function, object, and location. The first four is your function. So if you look at ten ten, the first one, the function is the board of ed. The second function is your object, which is 400, which would be con conferences or any contractual. And then your last one is location. This, this school district uses <coughs> two and two. We go four numbers, three numbers, then two and two to set up location and initiator. Just to familiarize with your with this budget code here. So if you just go down in the the, uh, the columns here, 1010 would be Board of Education, 1040 is District Clerk's Department, 1060 is District Meetings, 1240 would be the Superintendent's Office, all the way down through your budget. Now the second set of numbers, which are your three numbers, the number that starts with one deals with earnings. So if you just look at the one, uh, excuse me, let's go to your custodians. 
1620 is custodial operation of the plant. 160 are the custodial salaries. That's bumped up a step because that's triborough. This, this takes into account the triborough step increase only. So 160 would be their base salaries, their longevities, and anyone and anything else that they get on their salary. The next line would be the overtime that's allotted for Mr. Velez to use to get the buildings correct. And then there's another line labeled substitutes. Okay, and it's like that throughout the whole budget. So if you wanted to look at and look at the security lines, you'll see them under instruction. And they're listed separately. They'll say salaries and then that everything else there. We have a breakdown on the Twilight program. Yeah, there's a twilight amount now. What we spend. You want what we've spent to date? And what we've spent to date, Mr. Pacella, on the home teaching? I'm going to, I'm going to, Mr. Lemstein already asked for a line item budget of what we've spent to date. Okay. So you'll get a report similar to this budget line by line. But with what we've spent in 1213 compared to the 1213 budget. Okay. Yes, Mr. Mack. Are we still going to be getting more information about all of that, though, from, from Mr. McLemore, though, uh, concerning attendance and, and so on? Yeah. Because I'm, I'm still really seeking more information about how effective the programs that we currently have are. Are you referring to? Home teaching, or are you referring to program at the high school? Twilight? Both. Both. Yeah, Twilight and, <coughs> and our home teaching. Oh. In other words, we're paying the teachers to, to do the home teaching, and if they go and there's no kid, they, they still get a certain amount of pay, correct? Oh, that is what else. Uh, so I, I think if, if we get some kind of a cost analysis, this is what it's costing, and, and th these are the numbers of uh, kids who are. Are being served. Same as the question. Yeah. And then wouldn't it be interesting to see if the kids end up passing the right? Because if they don't, then the money was truly just thrown away. Yeah, by law, we still have to fulfill that obligation in some capacity or something. But it would still help him to, for us to understand why we're going to try something different. Oh, no doubt. Because I found like you were still working on that, right? What you had presented us. Okay. And the, the information on the transportation that we asked for is that's in here. Yeah, and we can discuss that when we have all the information. But I just wanted to give you what the Mark's analysis was on how to do that. And I knew it would be uh, an implementation nightmare because you're gonna, you, you have to rely on so many buildings to get the information on an updated basis. Right, and it's going to change basically on a daily basis. Right, so we have two options in there. You have our recommendation that you want to provide transportation, but we can discuss that more when the uh, leases, okay. uh, everything needs to be done. Yeah. Plus you. Yeah. 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 we leave here this evening if there's information um, that you're like oh we, we you know we really need to look at this or we should have had that um, please let me know and, and we'll get it to Mr. Pasella and, and Mr. Piso so that they can um, you know be prepared and get us what it is that we are asking to look at as far as numbers. So 
just, I guess, because you want to turn this over to the public at this point, um, I'm assuming it's 730. Um, for the next meeting, which will be on February 21st. We, at, at NFA. At NFA. Mm -hmm. We'll have all this information. We'll have probably recommendations from the superintendent. And we'll have a lot more information once uh, CNI and Special Ed are done with all their evaluations of the schools. Uh, that will all be uh, placed on in the packet, and we'll get that out before the obviously before the weekend to give you some time to review. Yes. I'll provide you with the uh, up-to-date budget status report uh, and any changes that we might hear from the state. <coughs> and we're certainly going to be still analyzing a lot of these figures. And I'll let you know what uh, any changes. But this is your baseline budget will be operating. Anything that we change going forward will be a modification of this. Okay. So at this time, we will take 30 minutes um, here. Suggestions on ways of reducing the budget. Um, we haven't received any. Okay, so no one signed up. So anyone wishing to speak, you will have three minutes to speak. Uh, please step to the podium. And give your name and address. Since there's no one that has any input at this time, um, I'm going to ask the board um, that we um, call a special meeting at this time for the purpose of executive session. Um, we would have to sign a waiver, um, waiving the 24 hours notice. Um, we've been informed that in order to go into executive session after a budget workshop, we actually um, have to label it as a special meeting. So I need consensus of the board um, that you're willing to sign the waiver to um, have a special meeting. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. Prokash? Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Be it resolved that the board hereby recesses into executive session for the following purpose, to discuss the employment history of particular individuals. The board will not be taking action after the executive session. Can I have a motion? Roll call. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Pujet? Yes. Next budget workshop will be February 21st, 6 p.m. at the NFA auditorium. Thank you all for being here.